Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In my curriculum video, a lot of people ask questions about our math curriculum that we are using this year, which will be Saxon Math Algebra 1. So I thought I would hop on here and just give you guys some details as to why we chose it and how we're using it and background on math history. So make sure you stick around. My name is Morgan here at The Life of Tillman's. If this is your first time, welcome. I'm glad you're here. If you've been with me before, welcome back. We are into the school year. And we're doing well and I forgot that I needed to hop on here and share all the details so forgive me because this is a little bit later but still very relevant so to give you guys some of our math history <laughs> which is like our background of math curricula that we have used I had to write these down so that I wouldn't forget my oldest has been using Saxon math since she was in the fourth grade prior to that she did one year with teaching textbooks and then three years or so with like spectrum math workbooks, um, critical thinking company math books, things like that. She did not like any of that. I think it was just too much, too many bells and whistles for her, especially the online math curriculum. So since we've switched to Saxon, she has not deterred from that at all. For my middle daughter, who is currently in seventh grade, she also did like spectrum workbooks. She did two years of teaching textbooks, and then she did two years of Horizons Math. And now she is currently doing Saxon Math 8-7, their pre-algebra course. And then she will go on to Algebra 1 with Saxon. For my youngest daughter, who's currently in third grade, we did Saxon Math K in first grade. And then we switched over to Math with Confidence Level uh, 2 and now Level 3. That is our math background. Before they hit kindergarten, I mean, it was basic math stuff. We played a lot of games, things like that, but no like formal curriculum of any kind. So some things that I feel are really important for our household when it comes to math is I'm super particular about how and when we switch math curricula. And that is really just to prevent any gaps. I think for education, math seems to be one of those things that there will be visible gaps if you flip-flop around to multiple math curricula. It just happens because they don't all lay it out the same. You know, there are things that in Horizons Math, for example, that my now third grader is covering in that course in Math with Confidence, I'm sorry, that were touched on in Horizons Math Level 2 or vice versa. Like, there are just a lot of different things and I feel like you can definitely get gaps in math, especially if you jump around to a different curriculum pretty often. So that's something that I try not to do because I don't want to have that problem. And it helps me to be able to pinpoint what issues they may be having, how we can make those better. It's just a better flow for us. So I'm really particular about that. Another thing with me looking at math now is I'm really planning for high school and I don't want to have to change in high school for all of the reasons that I just said, but it just brings a sense of stability for our children and me as well as the teacher, knowing that we're going to be using the same curriculum, we have the same method, we get into it, the same processes, like all the things. It just really brings stability for us. And with me planning for high school, I'm looking forward, I'm, I'm planning out already for my eighth grader, which I have done already, but what she's going to be doing for math, what is her math path that she will be taking, as well as science and history, everything else, and that's just, I don't want to leave it to chance. So I have done a lot of research and I've already mapped out our path or for her to graduation. And I don't plan on deterring from that unless we hit some major roadblocks. And like I've said before, she has been doing Saxon since fourth grade. We've not hit any roadblocks since. So I'm pretty sure and I feel pretty confident that the plan that I have for her up until graduation will work out great for us. And if it doesn't, that's all a part of God's plan and we will work through that. So that's my background and feelings when it comes to math. Now I'm going to show you the components that come with the sex and math curriculum. If I didn't say it already, I'll, I'll say it again because my brain, but I'm going to link some videos down below for flip throughs for this curriculum. I will not do flip throughs, but I will give you guys a review once we are done with it. So Saxon Algebra 1, it comes with the student textbook. I found everything that I have used either on thriftbooks.com or the Facebook marketplace. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just those two places, but textbook here. And it also comes with your test booklet. And I bought a packet of this. I knew we would go into it, but I bought 
three of these items from the Facebook Marketplace for $40 off. Completely like brand new, never used. Amazing. And then here is the homeschool packet. So in the homeschool packet, there's just answers. I'm so confused about that, why the homeschool packet only got the answers to the question. So, I mean, when I say just answers, the problems are not worked out step by step, which that's so weird to me that the homeschool packet would do that. Maybe they have confidence that we're like amazing, right? And we don't need the steps, uh, but I do. So on top of that, I went and got the solutions manual and this one has every single problem worked out, every single step to every lesson and test and practice questions within the textbook. There are a total of 30 tests and 120 lessons. If you guys follow along, y'all know that we do not do all 120 lessons. What my daughter is doing is testing into this course because there's a lot of review that happens at the beginning of these books. We have been doing this now, like I said, since she was in the fourth grade. So she tests through until she gets an 85. And once she makes an 85, the lessons that go along with that test, that is where she will start doing the actual lessons. If you have any questions about that, let me know, but it's pretty simple. Okay, so that is all of the components to Saxon Math Algebra 1. Now, let me talk to you guys about why I chose it and how we're using it. The first reason, as I talked about before, is mapping out our plan. I love that I found the availability of this Saxon Math course being what I consider to be partially online. It's not fully online because you guys see we have textbooks and worksheets and all the things, right? However, there are videos on the Dive Math work, uh, website by Dr. Shorman, and he has recorded videos for every lesson for the Sex and Math Algebra 1. Those are the videos that we are using for my girls. It just works out for us <laughs> because my girls are not willing and ready to go fully online for math, especially my oldest daughter. She loves having a textbook and papers to be able to write all of her things down. And so she did not want to go fully online for math just yet, but we do have a plan for her to do that. And this is our middle step. The second thing that I love about it, and which is not necessarily the Saxon curriculum books per se, but the videos that Dr. Shorman does are from a biblical perspective. And I love that. We have only had one other math curriculum, which was Horizons Math, that provided any type of biblical basis for math and you know god is in all things science math history ela all the things and so i just really like that um it's those constant reminders you know getting god's word and all the things that you do and being grateful for your numbers and hopefully it will dispel any like um negativity towards math if there is some which we typically don't have in our house but it's really good to have that. I enjoyed that. It was like a bonus. Another reason why I chose to do it this way and purchase the videos off of the website is because Dr. Shorman is teaching those. And we have watched a lot of his sample videos for his other curriculum, which is uh, Shorman Math, and love his teaching style. And so we're appreciative of that. We're glad that we can, that they can still use the books that they are interested in and still get the online teaching. And it's helpful for me too. I'm finding that I am having to work a little bit harder <laughs> to explain some of these things to the girls because it's been a really long time since I've done a lot of this stuff. And so it's really helpful. We can sit down, we can look at the videos, we can go back, we can you know, go to a specific point in the video, we can work out additional problems, all of that. In the videos, he also gives works out problems that aren't specifically within the curriculum to help broaden their ability to work out these problems, which I love. I love, I, I'm that person that when I see those videos of how to work out a math problem in like this super different way that none of us grew up learning, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I wanna be able to learn all the different ways to do this one math problem. So that's been really helpful as well. And with having him teach the videos, it is preparing them for next year when they will go to Shorman Math. That is our plan. And so they are getting used to his teaching style, hearing his voice, all the things that go along with it to prepare them for that. Another reason why I chose the Algebra 1 is because of where my daughters are, this was a really cost-effective option. As I said before, I got the entire packet for $40 and then I had to buy another textbook so each of my daughters could have their own textbook. And they each have their own like uh, the worksheets. So it just made it 
a, a way more cost effective. The videos are purchased. It's not like a subscription. And so they don't have to be done with it within a certain amount of time. And each one of them can use those videos. Math is gets expensive, just like science and all these other things that get pricey. And for me, I have to figure out ways to both provide what my girls need. And since they are so close together, see how we can cut costs on that. And this was another way to be able to do so. And another reason why we chose it, which I've already talked about before, is to just decrease the amount of gaps that my girls have in their math education. My middle daughter has been using Saxon 8-7 and she will go on to Algebra 1 and it just flows really well. My, my oldest daughter has been using Saxon since fourth grade and she's just flowing right into it. One thing that I love that Dr. Shorman does on his website for the Shorman math is he shows a chart for transitioning from Saxon math over to Shorman math and different stages and where you need to go. And so it was perfect. It lined it out very well for us. And I think we're going to have a really smooth transition next year into Shorman math. And we're like in a halfway point right here. So another thing that I wanted to talk about was someone asked, like, what's the difference between the dive and Shorman math and Saxon math? And I wanted to clarify that dive is the website. And this is my knowledge from what I've what I've researched on the website. But dive math is a website. And I say dive math, but they also have science on there as well, which I did not know until I got on there and really explored around. But they have science on there as well. And so then within dive math, there is Shorman math, and then they have the Saxon math concepts. So what Dr. Shorman did was take John Saxon's math concepts, and I'm basically just going to say upgrade them, <laughs> okay? Um, there are more details into that, and but that's what he did with Shorman math. And so it can help with transitioning your child from Saxon math over to Shorman math, because of the way he chose to do it, which I'm really grateful for that. Shorman math is more up to date than Saxon math, but Saxon math is not like antiquated, you guys. Like it's not obsolete by any means. And we have a lot of people that we know who have graduated recently having only used Saxon math and they are phenomenal at math. They had no problem with ACT, none of that. And so I, I fully support the Saxon math. Now it can be a little dry, okay? It, it's definitely not like bells and whistles. You have to have a child who is interested in that. And some people have negative opinions about Saxon math so far. We don't, other than sometimes it just takes a lot of time, but that's just math sometimes. So that is the difference on the site. So let me go back. So you will find Shorman math on there. You will find things for Saxon math, and then you will find science on there as well. Shorman math has your pre-algebra, algebra one, two, all the way up to like calculus all online there are video lessons live classes you get a 12-month subscription you get a sibling discount there's tons of stuff i will link the website down below and i'll also link a couple of videos with people who have used shorman math been on the website and they have phenomenal videos for you guys to peruse i will not be the gatekeeper of all of that and please know that i don't know it all so check out your resources if that's something that you're interested in looking at some other options for Saxon math, if you did not want to do the dive math um, videos for Saxon math, if your child is in any Saxon course, there's Nicole the Math Lady, which we have tried. She just didn't like the videos. Nicole the Math I thought was awesome, but she was not having it. And so that's fine. I wasn't going to force her to do it. She was doing really well reading the lessons and answering questions all on her own and reaching out to me if she needed help. So I didn't worry about it, but there's Nicole the Math Lady. Then there are the Shorman Math videos. I say Shorman Math. The videos by Dr. Shorman for Saxon Algebra. Those are there as well. And then there is also My Math Assist. And all of those have video lessons for Saxon Math Curriculum. I have heard varying things about all of them. And if that's something that you're looking for, because you're like me, Algebra 1, things are getting a little sticky. My memory is a little foggy. That's the perfect place to go to check out all of those. And a lot of them will have samples that you can look at, free trials, things like that, so you don't have to commit. See if your child likes it for the first seven lessons. If they don't, you abort mission and you're done, right? You go and find something else. So there are tons of options out there. And I felt like with lots of research, not switching curricula because that was not an option because it wasn't necessary, that this was the best option for us. It is like the prep work for fully moving over to Shorman Math next year for Algebra 2. 
If you guys have any more questions, please let me know. I hope this video was helpful. Check the links down in the description and I'll see you guys back for the next video. Bye.